Welcome to the Nutritious and Delicious podcast with me, Bethany. Our mission is to support busy parents all over the world to learn time management while taking care of your nutritional, physical, and mental health. After all, a healthy family starts with a healthy parent. So I'm super excited today. I have Leslie with me here. And Leslie is an integrative women's health coach who supports her clients to know themselves and their hormones better so that they can make their lifestyle choices for the long term. She also runs an outdoor women fitness business called Wild Country Women and has a podcast series on managing self-care in the sandwich years. Leslie has two children aged 10 and 12 and supports her mother who has Alzheimer's. Her life is a juggle. She loves sharing her strategies for self-care with her audience. So welcome, Leslie. Thank you so much for having me, Bethany. It is lovely to be here. Yeah, I love this. We have an episode today, which is kind of a different one, and it's called Maintaining Your Sanity Through the Sandwich Years. So I would love for you to, first of all, um, share with the audience, what is the sandwich years for people that don't actually understand what it is? So when I talk about the sandwich years, I'm talking about those years where we might find ourselves with dependent children at home. So children who are still going to school, who are dependent on us financially and for everything else. And our parents increasingly need our support and dependence. And this is where I have found myself in the last couple of years with children who are still relatively young, who need me, and then my mother who has Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So, and I also do quite a bit of support for my mother-in-law and my my dad and my stepmother, unfortunately, isn't very well either. So I really sometimes feel very torn. And yet I also know that I want to live my life. So to be able yeah. to live my life as a family, to be able to continue to grow myself and my business um, and to do so with grace and ease and continuing to honor to honor my needs in order that I stay healthy and well for the long term that's a lot it's um mm. I think it's it goes hand in hand I think with a lot of moms out there that are kind of um doing it all feeling like that super person superwoman and I would really be interested in understanding sort of how you came into this space and helping other families and mm -hmm. why are you so passionate about this this topic? Well, so I've been working in women's health and fitness for the last eight or nine years. I trained initially as a personal trainer, working outside, and then I became, and I, a lot of the time, like you, I was actually working with mums, relatively new mums with young children, and supporting them it, through my fitness classes and run coaching and personal training to begin to um, take themselves, um, put themselves back on their list of priorities yeah. and look after themselves. But it was really interesting. And then I got very interested in the perimenopause. I'm now in my mid forties. A lot of my clients were in their forties and fifties. And so I started um, taking courses and then qualified as an, a women's health coach because there's so much more than just movement that is important yeah. in this phase. And so so for me, I've always been led by wanting to support the women who I work with to live wildly well, to live in a way that supports them and their families and where they understand themselves and find and know that they're kind of honouring mm -hmm. their own values and their needs. And then, and and through this has also been my own journey of personal development, of, of, of occasional health challenges, stresses and anxiety have been things that I've had to... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, which, which come along uh, come along with being a parent, really. Yeah. But it's been very interesting as I've gone through my 40s, understanding that actually my hormones are having an impact on how resilient I am to those challenges, um, to the challenges of additional stress or to sleepless sleepless nights and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so, and then, so often I found that I've been working with people who, with women who are, you know, where they're where their parents are um, struggling with health issues and they're having to try and they've got very dependent teenagers and the teens aren't very good at looking after themselves. No. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and then and then and then I kind of started going through this kind of post lock. My mom was living on her own, about a three-hour drive away from me. 
and lockdown was interesting because we you know obviously you weren't allowed to travel she was on her own and it made it very apparent by the end of that first lockdown here in the UK mm -hmm. that she was really struggling to look after herself well yeah um and kind of remember going and visiting her and going this isn't quite right I mean we've always joked about her losing things but actually this was kind of a step beyond and I was finding myself driving there and back in a day because you weren't allowed into people's homes right. or I was finding myself going every weekend and it's just a big pull on the time so right so we eventually she we got I got her to move a bit closer to us and she lived with us for six months and it's very clear that we can't do that again because the impact it has on the whole family was really, it was just really hard. She loved it, but actually <laughs> it was um, yeah. we were constantly, her anxiety is very high and we were constantly having to find things. And so so she, she moved into a flat independently and then about six months later, we got a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, which we probably knew was coming. Right. And I have, found it quite hard but because of the kind of person I am and because of those years of supporting other women in their self-care I wanted to go I knew that you know, I needed to be able to look after myself well in this phase right I didn't want to quit my business and I didn't want to quit looking after my family and I didn't want to leave my mum in the lurch so I've been navigating a path all year long of how do I make sure that I look after myself? How do I scaffold my mother's support and care? And how do I ensure that I have quality time with my children? Mm -hmm. And I have, this year I have allowed my business and my work life to shrink. Okay. I've, just, I've just allowed that to happen because yeah. it needed to in order to accommodate other things. And I've changed my path a little bit. I used to teach lots of fitness classes, for example, and then I just would have a day or two of one-to-one -one coaching. And now I teach my fitness classes towards the end of the week and the beginning of the week is a mixture of coaching and supporting my mother. It and sounds I've, like there's a lot going on for you. Yeah, so, but what, what I've been doing and what I um, support clients and what I wanted to share with people was that, it doesn't just have to be another burden on yeah. top of all of your other burdens and that there are ways in which you can share that as well as and not lose yourself there's this phase in our lives where we you know when you when you're when you've got children who are really young who are really dependent on you we go through a phase where we do kind of sacrifice an awful lot for them mm -hmm. and then as they get older we take a little bit more of ourselves back day by day and so I, so we don't. What I, what we don't want to do is end up losing ourselves again yeah. into right into this massive whirlwind, this juggle, this roller coaster. Seek whatever analogy you like yeah. of needing to put, you know, needing to support everyone else but yourself. Because often in this phase where we've got dependent children and older parents, we're also going through our own transition in terms of perimenopause, where um, our changing hormones are going to have a role to play that where we might be struggling more with sleep we might be feeling more stressed and anxious our mood might be lower mm -hmm. um or we might have aches and pains and niggles and things are changing that can feel really uncomfortable so yeah so i'm really keen to kind of share strategies that i've learned over the last year the last few years um as well as continue to keep applying them to my yeah. own self my own life and to share kind of honestly where I can where they work and where they just really don't yeah <laughs> so. what's applicable so in that case then I do really want to hear some strategies that you have um for the women out there um there's probably uh, there's probably men out there too with the same yeah. thing helping Absolutely. other other parents and stuff like that so um give us give us five strategies so start with your number one kind of what you like to do to kind of help yourself feel better between these sandwich years yeah so so number one for me has been asking for help mm -hmm. uh, because it's really easy to feel like you are on your own yes and you aren't so whether it is support groups whether it is um kind of for, in my case like the Alzheimer's Society here in the UK and I'm pretty sure the Alzheimer's Association in the US have kind of local groups that you can join and mm -hmm. we get allocated 
a support worker. And, and then I, just every conversation I've had with any health professional has been, what do I do next? How do I get more support? Mm -hmm. And I have got care support in for my mother earlier than she thinks she needs it, but it's taken a massive burden off me. And I've also got kind of my own emotional support. So I was like, I knew this was coming and I was like, actually, I need to get in touch with my own coach because I need her support to help me navigate my way through this. Yeah. Asking for help sometimes can feel really hard. And I mean, I, I have a privilege in that I've already got somebody that I work with, but sometimes it can be just as good as having one of those, a friend who will really listen. Um, and then I have just reached out to every organisation in the area to work out how I support mum mm -hmm. and how they can support me. Um, and then I've started learning a lot. So that would be one, number one is to, to, to ask for help. And sometimes that is asking for help, saying, asking your spouse to do a bit more, mm -hmm. getting your children to do a little bit more around the house so that you can create space and capacity. Right. Number two is not to neglect your own self-care to sleep, to have a regular sleep and bedtime, to drink water, to eat nourishing meals, not to forget to eat, which it sometimes can be the case yeah. and you end up forgetting about lunch because you're rushing from, you know, sometimes it's like, drop the kids at school, take my mom to an appointment, come back to, 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 in order to do a couple of clients' calls, pick up the kids, pick up the kids from mm -hmm. school, you know, make sure that my mum, my mother's got her dinner sorted. And, it, you know, and then in that time, where is the space to eat properly? And so right. planning meals, planning meals, always having a bottle of water to hand. I mean, it's so simple, but they those things make a big difference to keeping your blood sugar stable, to staying well hydrated, means that you're much better able to handle anything that the world throws at you. Yeah. Um, movement and time outside, so something that's restorative, um kind of all of those things that kind of add up to our own self-care yeah um, you, you don't want to be sitting in the car kind of having low blood sugar and then obviously you snap at somebody that yes. doesn't understand either right so you want to make sure that you're properly provided i would also suggest probably putting things in the glove compartment box for yeah. those emergency times where you do have to rush out to an appointment and you haven't had time to make yourself yeah. a shake or absolutely yeah, yeah. I kind of always got like a little pot of nuts or some oat cakes yeah. or something like that somewhere handy so that actually when things are overrun which they inevitably do that that's a little bit easier yeah um so so asking for help uh, supporting yourself and another one is like finding your boundaries like it would be really easy for us to just be swept up into caring mm -hmm. for our loved ones our children but actually sometimes you need to set boundaries so like not so I've had to set boundaries for my mother who was texting me all day, all hours of the day and night. Yeah. Um, and so, and she doesn't always remember or she's really insulted if I say, can you not do that? Um, because if I don't respond to the first text, she just keeps texting and texting right. and texting until mm. we respond. So finding boundaries around that, which is actually, some of that is just like a mental boundary. I don't have to respond to all those text messages. Right. I just don't have to respond to them. And when I have time, I will do. It's not, it's not an emergency, right? So. It's not an emergency. Yeah. And to say to myself um, that I'm not, so I'm trying only, get my mum lives 10 miles away, it's about half an hour drive, um, depending on whether or not they're digging up the roads, it seems at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah. But I'm like, uh, but I, but I will, and my boundary is I go down, I will go down there twice a week. Yeah. So going every day does not help me or her. So, and so the boundaries are, I'll go down twice a week, once the weekend, once in the week, and then the rest of the time, um, the, the, you know, the carers sure. are there. Um, it yeah. took six months to get care support, six to nine months to get the care support in place. So it's kind of a privileged position to be in now. Um, how how come it takes so long to get um, somebody involved? Is it just the research of finding it's partly the research. It's actually here we've got a massive sort of shortage of people working in care. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, which is which is partly partly related to um, partly related to Brexit. Um, so Britain has Britain leaving the EU right. now makes it harder for um, companies like that to recruit oh, European care workers. Okay. It's not traditionally a terribly well paid 
industry right. uh, through lockdown obviously a lot of that changed and got harder um so yeah so people are leaving the care industry because they're finding right. there's a job is it um job shortage in other easier ways to yeah. work so i just i ended up on a waiting list i ended up on wow. a waiting list for a care agency for it must have been close to six months and then the other ones i found so i've got two different kinds of care going in and the other ones i found through um i take my mum to something called a memory cafe and okay. there's a care group so this has been my reaching out for support and asking for help and in the carers group somebody sadly had lost their wife to alzheimer's oh. He passed on the contact details of the carers he'd been using. Oh, that's nice. So I knew there was an availability there, so that was partly luck. Right. Um, yeah, so reaching out for, so getting care support isn't the easiest thing. Um, and actually what I've done is a relatively low cost at the moment. It will, The cost will go up because it's just right. two short visits a day. Um, and my mother's very sociable so even though she doesn't believe she knows she needs help she loves having a chat right. so now she's got two points in the day and it means that i've got peace of mind right so get so and then also they they've helped me to create those boundaries of not going and not too needing to speak yeah yeah boundaries are important whether they're with ch ch small children or adults that um you know because obviously when you start when you have Alzheimer's and stuff, it's like you go backwards a little bit in time. And yeah, I think the stage where my mum is, they basically, the stage where my mum is, it's like her mental age is about eight to 12. So, so yeah, it's, it's similar to my actual kids. And yeah. she's not capable of things like, things that she would have been, you know, the kids are now more capable than she is in the kitchen, for example. Right. I don't, my mum can make herself a piece of toast, but making a sandwich, which has, a number of processes to it is really hard. Right. She can just about put a kind of readily ready prepared meal in the microwave. Sometimes she remembers how to switch it. Yeah, the the dangers are when they're living alone. I know we struggled with this with my grandma too. Is that um, them leaving things like the stove on or forgetting yeah. to take their medicines, and that's why um, people need to sort of understand why why they do need a lot more care eventually yeah. because they may start overtaking their pills or forgetting or leaving yeah. appliances I actually, on. I had an incident of that not long ago and yeah. ended up having to take my mum to hospital just to check she was oh, okay. Geez. But I do have a, um, so again, this is about asking for help, comes back to point number one, asking for help. Yeah. Just the the, initial, the place where I went, something called the memory service is where I took mum to get her assessment. Mm -hmm. And then they had, they offered me the chance to talk to an occupational therapist. And I was like, yes, please. So I'm just saying, yes, any help yeah. anyone offers, say yes, I want to talk about it. She got me, so this occupational therapist got me a, a, a timed dispenser. Oh, so that's that a good the, idea. Dispenser, the dispenser has an alarm and then, and then you tip, in order to turn the alarm off, you have to tip the medication into your hand okay. and it will only dispense the medication once a day. So that's then taken, you know, I don't have to worry about that in right. the same way. But I, to get that, point number one, I had to ask for help. Right. I remember meeting somebody earlier in this early in this journey. I go cold water swimming, and there's a lovely marine lake. And I remember meeting somebody early in this journey, and I was just standing by the but where I go swimming. Everyone just chats. It's really friendly. There's you have to be a particular kind of person to swim through the winter. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which, but bear in mind that the winter is not as cold. In, no, not in, like in, it is here in Canada. Than it is, it's called the it polar freeze Canada. or something. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the water would probably freeze there. Um, so, and I remember talking to somebody and she'd actually lo just lost her father to Alzheimer's. So, and she'd been his care support person th over the, th throughout his illness. And her advice to me was ask for all the support that you can get yeah. and downplay your role to any of the official agencies. So that, because that if they think if if the agencies and it might be different in the states and Canada, I don't know. Yeah. But if they think that you've got support, then they won't offer. If they think that individual has got enough support, then they won't offer anything else. Right. Now I have, I have to pay for the support anyway, but I just have to keep asking and asking, and it makes a massive difference to that. I would imagine the government and stuff would probably think a lot of this would rely on children like um the generations before and it's almost like yeah. well you guys can do it but again like you said you've still got jobs 
you could be a single parent trying to do this and also raising your children. So that's a lot. That's a lot between, you know, raising your own children and almost having a, a parent yeah. starting to act like another child where you don't want to leave them sort of alone and you need to kind of find those those mm. things. But that's great. You found a lot of these different resources. Yeah. I think that's really helpful. And um, it, and it, but it's part of my, it's like, I felt like I, every now and then I felt like I was losing my mind. Yeah. And so I'm like, I cannot go down that hole. So I will go and find the steps to put, to climb back out of it again, even if right. I can't get all the way to the top. And that, that's another thing is I had to reassess and this is what, reassess what is important to you, right? Yeah. Like I have a tendency to just volunteer to do things. Um, to help out with things at school, to support my friends, to, right. um, you know, to cook for people, to do this and that. And I've had to just reassess that to go through a process. And it's something I've always done with my clients anyway. Yeah. Like an exercise I call, what's on your plate? And sometimes I actually give them a paper plate to write on all of the responsibilities that you've got. And then you work out what can I, you know, what gives me joy, because joy is important, right. and what doesn't have to be on there anymore. So reassessing what is top of the list of things for you to do, and to ensure that you're looking up, that one of those is the things that you do for your own self-care. So jumping yeah. in cold water, for example, is one of mine. <laughs> Shock therapy, there you go. Shock therapy, yeah. <laughs> well, to, yeah, cold water swimming and walks in the woods are part of how I create space and yeah. time for myself. So, That's um, very rejuvenating for a lot of people. I find nature seems to be yeah. one where you can step away for the day. I know myself included as well. We have the mountains here, so um, hiking. Yeah, hiking in the summer. I took my boys hiking quite a bit and that was mm -hmm. really therapeutic. Um, and educational i'd say for that, them as well yeah. um and then in the winter we do quite a bit of snow walks i guess we haven't done yeah. snow shoeing yet but we do a lot of activities outside mm. and i think it's important because you can get really cooped up at home yeah. especially in the winter i know obviously during covid a lot of people were feeling cooped up so even just getting outside for a quick walk if you can in nature around some trees or a body of water if you can um, is there anything else that you have as, as tools? Um, so, well, just to go back to nature is really helpful, but one of the key things is to find ways to take time off, completely yeah. off. And that's not, that's easier said than done. And sometimes it requires quite a bit of forward planning, but I, so my mother goes and stays with my sister who lives in Ireland. Okay. So we have to find ways of getting her to travel there which now means one or my, either my sister or I have to go back and forth because she can't travel on her own. Right. But we, but so she, she goes to Ireland for a few weeks in the summer and then for a couple of weeks over Christmas. And then that gives us, because it's not just me, it's the family mental space. So then that gives us as a family unit time off. Mm -hmm. But then I also need time off for me. So, and I will plan that every couple of months. So beginning of the school year I took myself off on a yoga retreat for Lovely. just for, for a weekend for mm. I think I was away for two nights but it was a restorative yoga yeah. retreat it wasn't a let's do loads of yoga retreat it was let's do lots of lying down and meditating retreat yeah and nourishing ourselves with good food and with nature so yeah. that was real time off for me a room on my own with a beautiful view up in the trees it wasn't very far away and it wasn't very expensive but it was incredible because I came back with feeling clearer in my head and clearer in my priorities. And then I've got, again, I know that December can be very, very busy with all mm. of the things with school. And that my mother, because she's going to Ireland, will start to get very, very anxious. She gets very anxious with any change or transition. So, mm. so to the end of November, before she enters that anxious phase, I'm going away with a girlfriend to a little cottage by the sea in down you know just a couple of hours away so that I've just got time off yeah to again I can come back with clarity and focus and it doesn't I mean it and it can be micro moments of time mm -hmm. off. so it can be um 
making sure that you book an afternoon where you just your phone is off maybe you go maybe you go to a spa maybe you just go for a swim yeah maybe you go and meet a friend for lunch but your phone is off something that is restorative and isn't part of the roller coaster of always being on yeah because sometimes when we're that busy we have got so much adrenaline and cortisol running through our system that we don't even notice that we're mm-hmm. tired and yeah. exhausted until we crash yeah. until we crash or until if we're menstruating we reach that final part of our we get into that pre-menstrual phase and that red mist comes down and yeah. you feel like you've got no control over it and that right. is amplified when we are stressed and tired and overwhelmed so exactly. and a lot of the women that I work with really struggle with that with not feeling like they're in control of their emotions but it's because they're tired and overwhelmed yeah they've kind of put themselves to the very end um i did the spa thing myself recently as well which was lovely yeah and it's it's hard to do because i think a lot of the times um you know you want to spend the money on everybody else but then as soon as it comes to yourself it's like but you know and you think of like 10 other ways of how to spend that money but um definitely yeah i went to a spa for the day and had a massage and just enjoyed the luxury of laying on like a I think it was like a hot limestone bed or something like that and just cool oh, things wow. like that and it takes you away for the day um another one i i like but i'd be cautious if you are a bit of a spender but going um shopping for yourself like mm. going to buy clothes or things like that is that something that fills you up and you're not stressed out yeah, shopping? absolutely yeah unfortunately shopping is something that i find incredibly draining yeah. um so <laughs> that's not on my list but yeah but yeah but actually if you go and and really feel in fact i can remember a friend making me do that once when my daughter my firstborn was really young and you know when they're really young all of your money feels like all of your money goes on the kids and you completely yeah. forget the and she she and i and the two babies went out to the shops and she strongly encouraged me to buy something beautiful that i could wear over christmas right. and i remember that you know and actually i was only going to buy one thing i wasn't going to spend very much money but i remember that real shift in thinking is that yeah actually yes i deserve this yeah i do and i deserve to feel lovely mm-hmm. so yeah so actually if shopping is your thing then then that can be a really nice thing to do and find somewhere that you actually like to go like so yeah. make it like bash but, um, yeah, I'm gonna say don't do it over Christmas either because you can never find parking and you're like mad before you get in the car. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not a good idea. But there's lots of different ways. Even like there's people that love to read. Um, maybe mm. go buy like a, a few series of books or something that you're really interested yeah. in, and just taking that time out to be able to go sit somewhere and quietly in your house, and maybe creative and crafty as well, because sometimes yeah. that can really help calm all of those racing thoughts we all have different ways to switch off don't we yeah definitely well that was amazing and thank you for sharing all of that today it's i hope something somewhere was helpful to someone who's listening to this yeah it's a new topic that we've never really discussed because usually we were discussing kind of like moms with um small children and sort of getting up to that teenage years but we've never really had anybody discuss like the sandwich years and i think it's incredibly important because there's a lot of people Mm -hmm. out there that um it kind of does go unrecognized and they are sort of looking after both and i know some families that are living with um in-laws and parents and things as well and trying to sort of help them manage and i've i've seen it firsthand um in our family as well of of kind of siblings having to come together and sort of Mm. take that um responsibility and it's hard when you're in a different country or um, further away from those people so Mm. yeah it's it's Mm. great and i love all the tools that you've given us today so where can our viewers actually con- contact you for more of your offering, Le- Leslie? Oh, thank you. So you can find me on Instagram, Leslie Waldron Health Coach. Leslie is with an EY, which I think quite often is spelled differently in the US. Um, and then for my fitness, it's wildcountrywoman.com. Um, or, um, or you can find me on LinkedIn um, as well. So, and it's Wild Country Woman on Facebook. Lovely. And I have... Um, Coming up, so kind of launching in December, we will be running and running with someone else who is equally sandwiched as me, a series of um, self-care in the sandwich years podcast. So we will, I'll let you know the details as and when. 
those are available. Lovely. Thanks so much, Leslie. It was a pleasure having you on today. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure and I hope that your audience find this useful. Mm -hmm.